Today is Sunday, June 28th. I'm Pastor Phil here at Good Shepherd Honolulu. Good morning. And together we take the time on this Sunday uh, to gather uh, really all around the world in places for worship. We come together at this time to worship and to learn from God's Word. God gives us an incredible invitation. Uh, he really doesn't uh, poke you, prod you. He just opens the door and invites you if you want to come and have fellowship with him. And so we're gathered here in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, here at 638 North Kuakini Street. And uh, we have taken advantage of this invitation to come and to experience God's presence together uh, in worship, as well as to take the time uh, to open up our heart, our soul, our mind, and even our lives to his instruction. We begin our worship today as we ask God to come to be with us uh, in his saving presence and to bless us with a refreshed and renewed vision for our life. And God promises to do that. And he gives us a vision of how that we can live each and every day. And even in that vision, he prepares us for the life in heaven that is to come where we will live with him forever. So we begin our worship, inviting God to be with us as we sing the hymn, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. Open your spirit this morning to the song of the Psalm 89. It refers to a holy one who will come to bring his people strength. So think about when you hear these words where you could use a, a boost from God as you serve him. For you have said, love is built to last forever. You have fixed your constancy firm in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one, sworn an oath to my servant David. In your name they rejoice all day long. By your saving justice they are raised up. 
You are the flower of their strength. By your favor, our strength is triumphant. To you, Yahweh, belongs our shield. To the Holy One of Israel, our King. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful, you said, I have given strength to a warrior. I have raised up a man chosen from my people. Of course, many believe and accept that the promise and the words of that psalm would speak of the Messiah, the coming Jesus Christ, who would do amazing things to provide strength to his people and help them also to triumph even over their enemies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I want you to take the time to listen to a song and to think about God's love and the challenge that he puts in front of you. As you listen to this song, uh, it's not one that you're supposed to try to sing along to. I just want to want you to ponder how God is helping you serve others and provide strength to you, his grace to help you and equip you to serve others. We are challenged as Christian people to extend ourselves, uh, to kind of go beyond the norm, to go beyond even the rules, and to provide love and service to the people who are in need. Jesus makes the promise. He will provide strength for those who will go the extra mile. Let's go ahead and uh, listen to the song and think about how Jesus calls us to go the extra mile. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's so easy to do what's easy And it's so hard to do what's hard Oh, but comfort so deceiving Cause it can harden up your heart So come with me and we we'll turn our cheeks and we we'll Wash some feet for a while And we will see how good love can be When we walk the extra mile Well if we take this brave adventure We could cover so much ground Why don't we take our lives and leave them we'll find freedom in laying them down so come with me and we'll turn our cheeks and we'll wash some feet for a while and we will see how good love can be when we walk the extra mile We will run and not grow weary We will walk and not grow faint So come with me and we'll turn our cheeks And we'll wash some feet for a while And we will see how good love can be
You know, I have to tell you, that's a special little song that we just listened to uh, by a good friend, Kip. He happens to be one that I met many, many years ago in Orange County. He's a worship leader in the Lutheran Church, serving in the great state of Texas. And uh, it helps us to, well, there we go. We got some applause from those who are here uh, honoring that, uh, is that the 8th, 9th, 10th island of the Hawaii? Well, I want to invite you now this morning uh, to open your mind to the instruction of Jesus about our mission for a lifetime. Think about the challenges, and there are many. For those who believe, and uh, Jesus promises great blessing and reward to those who remain faithful in the mission. These words from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, starting at the 34th verse. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Boldly believing by faith in the word of God and the blessings bestowed in Christ Jesus, together we join with the family of faith with a response of faith and with hope. Together we sing blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. The big island of the United States of America are not familiar with perhaps America's most favorite bundle. It might be the Big Mac meal or the Happy Meal or the Quarter Pounder with cheese, the side order of fries, and of course the drink. McDonald's has uh, really made a bundle, haven't they? Providing a bundle to us where we can order uh, one of the meals that's all bundled together where you get your sandwich, your fries, and your drink. They have a way of even encouraging you. If you'd like it your way, you can uh, kind of order it in a special way, perhaps even giving us choices so that we can make that uh, bundle of a purchase and enjoy uh, perhaps a tasty meal from McDonald's of America. Bundles. We're really familiar with bundles, but I wonder if uh, we sometimes lose sight of uh, the instructional words of Jesus that we just heard about in the Gospel of Matthew, where he provides to his followers those that he wants to equip to be faithful in the mission that he has given to them. He gives them a real bundle of things, including a bundle of of blessings. Now, as I said, the subject of this message is bundles, and in particular, it's about the bundle that Jesus talks about in the missionary talk of Jesus. So let's just uh, take a moment to uh, appreciate this bundle that Jesus provides to you and to me. You see, the good news of the gospel is the announcement that in Jesus Christ, the world has changed. Because of his suffering and death on a cross, three days later, his resurrection, ultimately then even his ascension to the right hand of the Father, the world is in a different situation. He has conquered by his death on a cross the enemy's worst ploy to destroy the cosmos and the people who dwell within by virtue of his death and his uh, triumphant resurrection, Jesus Christ announces 
that there is available to all humanity the forgiveness of sins and the experience of a relationship with the Holy Almighty God. He even wants us to know you can call him your Heavenly Father. But the good news would also remind us that even though we have fallen short of God's glory, we have stumbled and fallen in so many ways, that maybe we have even uh, tried each and every day to live to our own selfish gain or selfish glory, the good news is that in Christ Jesus, all who repent and believe and turn from their ways and look to Jesus will find in him he is the author and perfecter of our faith. He helps us even appreciate for the joy that was set before him, his mission to endure the cross, carry the sins of the world. He would encourage us to keep our eyes on the mission bundle that is important for children of God to know what's uh, sort of in their missionary basket or what they carry in their backpack through life. And in this particular gospel reading for today, he mentions how he bundles these four blessings all, in a sense, into one bundle. The first, as Jesus gives this missionary talk to his missionary children, he reminds them, that when you come to faith in Jesus Christ, when you become baptized and joined with Jesus, you then have joined the mission. You are a part of God's ongoing work to redeem and restore and renew the world, uh, the people who dwell here, as well as the future when God shall create a new heaven and a new earth. See, one of the blessings of believing and trusting in Jesus Christ and being baptized into union with him is you're in. You're on the team. And you have a call to be a missionary, an everyday missionary, and to share the story of God's love with family, friends, and for that matter, even your worst enemies. You see, that's the first thing. You have a call. And last week we heard how Jesus said, if we're faithful in that call, which is that we confess when the moments arise that Jesus Christ is Lord, he will confess your name and mine before the Father. We have an advocate who sticks up for us, defends us, helps us, even says to the Father, oh boy, let that sinful, selfish thing just sort of slide, O oh Father. This is one of your children, and I'm sticking up for them. So the first piece of the bundle, you might say, is your mission, the call to mission. But maybe you didn't recognize this, that Jesus made it very clear that a part of this bundled blessing is that by virtue of being in Christ and being a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, and being one of those people that the Bible says you have been made righteous by the work of Jesus Christ, you have been uh, pulled out of the world of darkness and evil and put out a team that dwells and walks in the light, let's just face it, if you start walking lightly and you start talking about the truth of the light of God's word, well, here's the second thing about this bundle. You are going to receive opposition. There will be some folks who will, because you are one of Christ's very own, treat you, they will treat you with hostility. Now, I suppose the first thing to remember is they're not so much uh, picking and upset with you. They don't like the Jesus and the ways of Jesus that you represent, that you talk about. But friends, just like as you know, when you kind of maybe get at the end of the drive-through at McDonald's or any fast food chain, 
and you order your bundle meal, you eventually do have to pay for it. There's nothing free there, is there? You have to pay for the bundle. That's part of the bundle. So it is, even with this call to be representatives, missionaries of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will face opposition. There will be people who might even be hostile to you. In fact, Jesus talked to, you, uh, to us about it might even be uh, your spouse. It might be your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. You might be your gardener. It might be the guy who cleans your pool. It might be the person who cuts your hair. It might be the person at the grocery store. But there are those who oppose Christ and his kingdom. And you'll know them when they oppose someone like you who's willing to be faithful and tell others the good news. There is salvation in no other name except the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Now, don't fret, dear friends. Don't maybe act so surprised. You know that things come in bundles. So we have a mission. We know that part of uh, our mission, we're going to experience some hostility if we are faithful to Christ. We're going to face some opposition if we speak up for the truth. But here's the beautiful thing that Jesus also reminds his followers in this Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter. Again, this is a talk, a missionary talk. He's talking to the children before they go out to do what God has commanded in order that they would do. And what he reminds us as a part of the bundle is also that Jesus, wherever we go, we have him with us. His presence is always abiding with us. We shall experience in this bundle a wonderful and unique blessing of the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus kind of said it in an unusual way that sometimes we don't necessarily appreciate or understand. When a salesperson comes to our door, if we choose to accept the sale and the terms of the sale, we shall reap, right, the reward of the salesperson. Jesus said, if a prophet comes and speaks to you and offers you his blessing, if you receive the blessing, you receive, right, the prophet's blessing. If a Christian comes to you and shares the grace of God in the Lord Jesus Christ and extends this blessing to you, should you accept it and receive it and say, close the terms and believe and trust in it, well, you shall receive the blessing, the Christian's blessing. That's why Jesus would want us to know that along the mission, even though there are times when opposition or hostility comes our way, we should remember that a part of the bundle of being a child of God is what we extend to people through our word and through our loving deeds is the power and the living presence of Jesus Christ who said if you extend the reward and the blessing and the promises of Jesus you're also just sort of extending the blessings of the power of Almighty God that's what it means to extend the prophet or the missionary or the Christian or your blessing to others. Should they receive it, they receive the reward. Finally, Jesus doesn't want us to forget that bundled up in this blessing of the call of the Christian, the call to be a child of God, the missionary, is a call, we have a purpose, and yes, there will be opposition, there will be those who might kind of rail against us, but be not be afraid, be faithful, be strong, be courageous, because the power and the presence of the risen Christ is present with you. He will guide your words, he will guide your actions. And do not ever forget that when our mission is finally completed, 
when we breathe our last breath, oh, there is the reward and the joy of eternal life in heaven with Jesus forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And, and, you know, an eternity is a very, very long, long time. Never ends. So, dear friends, whenever you hear God's word, especially when you hear the call of Jesus to join the mission, always remember, it's a wonderful bundle of blessing. Should you choose... To believe and pay the price of your obedience to the words of Jesus Christ. You know, down through the ages, there have been uh, men and women who have stood up to express the Christian faith. And one of those uh, compiled, bundled the blessings of blessings of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has been put together in the words of the Nicene Creed. And so uh, this morning, you're not only uh, going to kind of see it, and you can speak it even softly with faith in your heart, but you're going to see some actions that are associated of what it means to say, I believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's watch the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. the only Jesus Son Christ. of God, Eternally begotten of the Father. God from God. Light from light. True God from true God. Begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Dear friends, on this Sunday, what a joy it is to come together wherever you are. We're here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And isn't it amazing to see uh, the bundled God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together, three persons, uh, unique, distinct, and yet one true God. And so it's time for us to offer our prayers. We are a people of prayer. And as Jesus uh, one day came down and he came and gathered with his disciples, they noticed that uh, after he had spent his time in his prayer time, he was a a changed man. He looked quite different. And they were so inclined that they asked, Lord, teach us to pray. And so we do that each and every day in Christian community together as we pray. And so... Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day. And we thank you for the word of God that would enlighten our eyes to see you and the wonders of your ways. We praise and thank you for the word of God that makes us clean and whole, and healed, and fulfills even in us the promises that you have made. And so, Father, we thank you this day that your word has changed us. And thank you for teaching us a little bit more about the mission that you have called us to do. Now, Father, send forth your Holy Spirit upon us and fill us to make us fit for the mission that is before us. Pour blessing upon us, for the way that is before us comes with great challenge. You have called us to be your representatives and your caretakers of the earth. So as we go, send to us, Lord, equipped and blessed by your Holy Spirit, to be uh, the loving and united family of the church, the believers of the Lord Jesus, who together with the Father and the Spirit are now at work to redeem and restore this world. So, Father, we would pray, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in our world and especially in our lives, in our church, and in our homes And we pray, O Lord, that you would grant us extra grace when we face the opposition. Help us to trust and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ and that the devil's work is done. For in Christ Jesus, God, you are making all things new in this world. Help us to stay focused on your words and our Savior, our Lord Jesus, our brother and our King. And help us then, Lord, as we share with others the good news and deeds of mercy and love and grace we perform. We pray this day that you would help us on our mission to see those who are in need and to offer the reward of knowing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through our message and through our ministry. And when people respond by your Holy Spirit with faith and trust, help us to encourage them to join the family that works together to proclaim the good news about Jesus and to love others in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we come this day and pray, especially for those in our lives that we know who are in need. We we pray for those who are in ill health. We pray for the sick. We pray even for those that perhaps we know are kind of lonely or in some kind of desperate need. We pray for those who maybe uh, need some work, or we pray for those who need good rest from their work. As we name them, Lord, in our minds and on our hearts, 
We ask, Lord, that you would visit them by your Holy Spirit and send forth messengers of mercies. And we, Lord, also are willing to be so counted upon those who will follow faithfully the commands and the call and bring the good news to them. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And so may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.